In the virtual ghost village as more than 9,000 locals headed south to cheer on their team. Special police patrols had to be brought in to make sure that the empty homes didn't tempt the criminals. Shops were closed for the day, and even the cats had their paws crossed for victory. But John Helm followed the exodus as Emily went to Wembley. From the moment the villagers sent the team on their Wembley way, this was always going to be the most memorable weekend in Emily's history. The entire population of 2,000 right behind the team. This was certainly a shot for the album, and many of the players who'd never even been to the great stadium before must have already been hearing the roar when they came up the famous tunnel. Preparations for the big day went on almost unnoticed by the players. Some were getting their shots in a day early, keen to record every single second of a trip of a lifetime. Broken leg victim Willie Carpenter must have thought he was at Lord's or that the magic turf was about to produce a miracle cure. Steve, the hallowed turf, how does it feel? Superb, it really does. It must be beyond a dream, isn't it, this? What? <laughs> I can't believe it, honestly. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable. Wow. Did your mind drift back to last year when you came so close, of course? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, it's, although I've sort of been quite philosophical about it, I mean, it's always at the back of your mind. And as I wrote in my scrap book, it's, uh, especially with scoring in the semi-final, I've just put, I've repaid the debt and we're going this year. And it's brilliant. To round it off, a victory would be nice, wouldn't it, now? Super, yeah. I think we're going to do it, actually. feel really confident. So confident, some of the lads were even rehearsing the victory salute. The team to tell was in Buckinghamshire, and much to Emily's surprise and delight, they weren't the only Yorkshire club staying there. Sheffield Wednesday were en route to Queen's Park Rangers, so a chance for a reunion between former schoolmates. It's nice to meet up again in a situation like this, where uh, me and my sphere of things, just as a team for Tony football, it's, it's great just to be involved with something like this and the, and the event of Wembley as well. Although I know I'm not playing, it's just great to be with a club that's doing things. It's fantastic. How do you feel, Tony, about Emily getting to Wembley? Well, I'm, I'm very pleased for uh, Jez and for Chris because uh, they both supported me when I was lucky enough to get there. You don't know much about Wembley, though, do you? <laughs> Have you been there before? Well, I don't remember too much about it, but because uh, of the day, so I'll just as soon as we As soon as we got to Wembley, I rang, I rang him up on the Sunday night and asked him some advice, where to stay, hotels, where to stay, and how to prepare for Wembley and everything, so... I mean, you've been there four or five times now. Yeah, I've been there a few times, yeah. We went to Wembley yesterday afternoon, and it's, it's nearly as good as our pitch, it's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, just, it's oh, flat, yeah. flatter than ours, anyway. They need it really enough. Yeah, could, we could have done it with a bit of slope on it, we <laughs> thought there might be a slope on it, but there isn't. Time to be away now, and a nice gesture from Sheffield Wednesday. Their entire squad turns out to wave Emily off and wish them good luck. <laughs> what do you think you're going to feel like when you walk up that tunnel? I feel all right at the minute, looking forward to it. Yeah. Obviously, so imagine I'm going to lift a bit of nerves, but looking forward to it. Just, <laughs> just a day to enjoy. Yeah. And yeah. win. That's right. Yeah. Oh, win, yeah. No problem. No bother. It's tremendous for everybody at the club. We're all, we're all here now, and I don't think you can dream of this until you actually get here. You got a terrific send-off the other day from the, the village as well. You must now be wanting to create a little bit of history by winning. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, when we set off, it was half past six. It was going dark, it was raining, and the whole village was out just to see us set off. And that's typical of what's been, tremendous. been like this year. Yeah. So you feel you owe them a victory today, then? <laughs> Quietly confident, yes. Quietly confident, yeah. yeah. Cookie and Monster beat the foe by illegal use of his little bow. The other team, they don't moan because he's six foot two and 18 stone. 23rd is the day. We went down Wembley Way. Those two towers shook with eyes. You just can't beat those Wembley boys. The whole day is a treat for the players, gazing open-eyed in a dressing room almost as large as Emily's pitch. Good luck telegrams have come from all over the country. Opponents, Cone Dynamos, are already out there, savouring the atmosphere. And two of their players are familiar faces. Centre forward Mick Wood lives in Bailden, near Bradford, and goalkeeper Keith Mason once played for Emily's big brothers, Huddersfield Town. It's a great occasion for both clubs, and... Uh... 
like I say, we'll be going out in, you know, in an hour's you know, an hour. We're going back in there and sorting ourselves out, getting his act together, and you know, we'll get it all together, right? Yeah, super. Yeah. I do wonder about that, Keith, about the players' relationship an hour before the kickoff. You know, whether you do shake hands or whether you stay clear of one well, another. Well, I'm like Mickey. I know half of the lads that play for Emily, and uh, it's very hard actually. Um, you know, you want to go and shake hands for them, but you know, after all said and done, you, you're out there to win a game, and after the match, win or lose and you get together and you can have a chat. Uh, it's just a dream come true for me because it's ironic as well, I'm playing for a side against, you know, from Huddersfield because I play for Huddersfield Pro, so, you know, it's uh, just a dream come true for me. Emily's 9,000 fans outnumber Cone's supporters two to one. They're ready to sing their hearts out for their heroes. Meanwhile, in the dressing room, tension mounts. 15 minutes to kick off. Let's get Tim and John in down the sides. Come on, boys. Let's get Tim in. We're going to settle down far quicker than them. They haven't even been out. We're fitter than them and we're stronger than them. We're a fit side. I think that will tell. They've got four or five players in, you know, in the 30s. So we're... <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've got three or four in the 40s. <laughs> if we play as well as we can, no-one's going to beat us, are they? Yeah. Right, come on, lads. Do yourselves hey, justice. Come on, let's, let's, let's have some pride in here. Best day of his life. At long last, the waiting is over. It's all on the game now, and it's Emily who think they've scored first. Paul Gartland's corner comes off the inside of a post and the goalkeeper's knee. Did the ball cross the line? The referee said no. That was typical of Emily's luck. They were the better side. They just couldn't score. That happened a minute before the end of normal time. This happened in the first period of extra time. Cones Anderson makes himself a folk hero in the Lancashire town. That turns out to be the only goal of the game. Despair for Emily's valiant team. Emily did fight to the last, almost creating an equaliser with the very last move of the game. They'd given everything, but the glory went to the Dynamos. They'd won the FA Vars. But Emily have won colossal admiration, and on an unforgettable day, nobody can take away the memories. Place. I'd like to come back again next year. Still got a great day. Fantastic, yeah. Been even better night. <laughs> I know it's the wrong medal, but at least it's nice to have some memento of, of a course, day out at Wembley. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, just not just the medal, but also the memories of the old thing. You know, I mean, the crowd, fantastic. You know, and the lads, great team spirit. We've enjoyed the day. I mean, that's the main thing. You know, obviously we'd like to have won, but you know, it's only got to be one winner, isn't it? Next year, lads, next year. Now, it's been another... Unfortunately, lost to a side from Colne in Lancashire. Oh. Thousands travelled to the home of English football to see the game, and hundreds welcomed their conquered heroes back home last night. Jake Fowler followed them on the trail to Wembley. 
It's cup final time under the Twin Towers. Most villagers from Emlyon District were there. They travelled by car and coach to see the side from the welfare ground grace the green sword of Wembley. 11,000 fans from Yorkshire, less than half that number from across the Pennines supporting Colm Dynamos. And the Yorkshire supporters had that typical all-conquering air of confidence. They're going to win 3-1. 3-1. That's a prediction, and I've got money on it. Well, they're the best team. They're from Yorkshire. Emily will win. Emily will yeah. win 3-0. 3-0, 4-0. Yeah, 3-0, 4-0. I'm surprised that, actually, I was uh, not nervous, I feel. I feel absolutely superb, ready to go. And with this lot behind, it'd be absolutely tremendous. A crowd of 15,000 greeted the two teams. Emily, in light blue, had most of the early possession, but missed out on a few half chances that came their way. At the other end, the Colne attack was well contained by Emily's strong back four. Then, just before half-time, a goal-mouth scramble, and the balls kicked off the line by Colne defenders. But was it a goal for Emily? All weekend, their supporters have said it was. Did the ball cross the line? The incident was under the same crossbar as Jeff Hurst's controversial third goal in England's World Cup win back in 1966, but this time the referee said no. In the second half, Emily still pushing for that elusive opening, but can't get a clean shot on target. So, nil-nil after 90 minutes and a gruelling final half hour to go. It was the Lancashire side who got the break, Six minutes into extra time, a flicked on header and Stuart Anderson's cross goal volley sneaks in at the far post. But Emily battle on, but no reward despite John Francis's quick skills and hard running. This shot only finds the side netting. And another effort by Francis is fired over the bar from close range. Time, it seems, is up for the Yorkshire club. The cup is destined for Lancashire this year. So for Colm Dynamos, the joy of victory. And for Emily AFC, the exhaustion of defeat. So the cup, which was won by St Helens Town last year, will stay in Lancashire. But Emily know they had their chances on the afternoon, but missed out. They're a bit down at the moment, but... Uh... I think it was important getting, getting to Wembley as well. It's not as disappointing as losing in the semi-final. Although, I think they know they deserve to win. But all credit, I'm not, not taking any away from Crone because they've won the cup and that's it. But a, a cracking reception from the Yorkshire fans who travelled yes, down. Yes, we had about 11,000 fans down here. And it's, uh, they've done us proud and cheered us on all the way. I'd like to thank them all. 24 hours later on, and half of Wembley seem to have regrouped in the narrow streets of Emley Village in West Yorkshire to cheer their side, who are so near to Cup Glory. And who said that winning was all important? It would have been cream on the cake if, if we'd have won. But um, other than that, it's just great to have got to Wembley. Great feeling, great day, super the whole day, including last night as well. And next year? Yes, why not? We'll win it next year. Back then to the little ground where the road to Wembley will start all over again in just a few months' time.